Friends like, share, comment, subscribe my YouTube channel. Alright, the phone in question is the disastrously named Li Echo LE S3X626. And naming aside, for $100, this phone is so good, it feels like you're cheating. The unboxing experience, as you probably guessed given the price, is on the bland side. We've just got a charging brick, USB Type-C cable, and underneath that, a headphone jack adapter, because unfortunately, this phone has skipped that option. Taking a look at the body of the smartphone, it is light but sturdy. It feels firm in the hand and there is zero creaking due to that aluminium frame. The phone is fairly slim and also has a somewhat refreshing design language. You can see those completely flat sides and their sharp transition into the curved rear alongside these polished accents give the feeling of a no-nonsense straight-to-business handset. In fact, I'd go as far to say that when you compare it to an average $100 smartphone, this is like a Lamborghini to their smart car. There's also a mirror finish on the logo and the fingerprint scanner, which makes for an unusual but strangely impressive feature. It's also unique from the front, with seemingly no border on either side of the phone, giving it almost a futuristic edgeless feel. Whilst I do think the antenna bands could have been a little bit more seamlessly integrated, it is tough to complain about the way the phone looks. Okay, we're going to get straight into the meat of it. The X626 is packing a 10-core Helio X20, and when you combine that with 4GB of RAM, you get a really responsive system. Browsing the Play Store, flicking through home pages, even application loading times are often indistinguishable from top tier flagships. Now, the device comes with three backlit capacitive keys that are built into the body itself, which some people like because it doesn't intrude on that display, and some people don't like because they're a little bit less versatile. On screen buttons can be adapted, they can change depending on the context of the application, but these ones are stuck there. Very occasionally, if you push the phone too hard, if you try and download 8 or 9 different applications whilst flicking between multiple apps, the phone has been known to hang. It's frozen on me two times, but simply quitting the application and starting again has always solved that problem. It benchmarks pretty well too, scoring just under 100,000 points on Antutu, and this translates beautifully into gaming. Just about every, even top tier 3D title runs fluidly and you're getting nearly a full 60 frames per second on them. Storage wise, the base model comes with 32 gigabytes and unfortunately, no room for an SD card. Given that about 24 gigabytes of this is available for your applications, you will have to be somewhat selective with what content you download, but it is still a fair bit of space. The camera is where things are really taken to the next level, because this really is a 21 megapixel sensor. It produces bright, bold, and crisp images, and the refocus time here is lightning fast. It copes surprisingly well in lower lighting conditions, and the front 8 megapixel camera is solid and produces natural looking photos too. Obviously less sharp than the rear camera, but compared to other front cameras, is doing very well. Maybe the most surprising feat on the entire specification sheet is that the X626 is capable of 4K 30 frames per second video recording. And clearly this is far from the best 4K recording you can get from a phone, but it's there, it works, and this is an ultra high resolution compared to what most budget phones are doing. Taking a deeper dive at the user interface here, it seems like one huge mismatch. The font looks inspired by HTC, some of the icons LG, the multitasking menu from Apple, and the settings menu from Samsung. Now even though this does make it sound like a bit of a mess, it works. Granted, it doesn't have the most consistent identity, but it is seriously snappy, clean to look at, and fairly light in terms of bloatware, so it is tough to complain. Now, unfortunately, the device is based off Android 6.0, and there is almost a 0% chance of any update. So that is a fairly backwards version of Android, considering that Android 8.0 is now starting to roll out, but at the same time, for a budget-constrained user, that should not be a deal-breaker. The battery, sitting at 3000 mAh, is more or less bang on average. You can comfortably get a day of usage out of the phone, but don't expect too much more than that. Now, display. We've actually got a 5.5-inch 1080p LCD panel which, to be honest, is nothing special, but it is a sharp display with decent enough colours and viewing angles. The colour temperature here is a little bit on the cool side, but nonetheless, it's pretty good for videos and media. You've probably also realised by this point that it's not actually borderless as it appears when the screen is off. Turning the screen on, there is a pretty substantial rim that goes around the whole display on all four sides. It's clearly not the most impressive feature of the device, but at the same time, it would be hugely unreasonable to expect anything close to an edge-to-edge -edge display. Unfortunately, the speaker leaves a lot to be desired. 
Despite the phone's support for lossless audio, the single mono downwards firing speaker is a little tinny and caps out at a pretty low volume. Plugging in headphones though is a totally different story and they sound pretty great. Alright, so that is the Li Echo LE3X626 and it is really impressive. The fact that it would still be a good phone if it costs twice as much is not something you can say for many handsets out there. The design is well thought out, the build is solid, and whilst it doesn't bring too much new to the table, it handles the smartphone fundamentals with grace. The S3 X626 is a must buy for anyone looking for a bit of a bargain. Thanks a lot for watching guys, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.